Sam, you got to fix your camera. What's oh, up, guys? Yeah. There we go. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Hey, hey. Justin, got to turn on your camera. Can't see, we can't wait to see you. Awesome. Uh, I, I was joking with the guys in the, in the Telegram chat. This is the mother of all panels. This is the, I call it the mope. Because this, is, this is probably the most powerful panel in crypto right now. We got, we got, we got, uh, we basically got the, the, the famous, uh, the, uh, like the, the almighty Justin. <laughs> Just <teasing laughs> Justin here representing Tron. We got uh, Sam Beckman free here representing FTX. Uh, we got uh, Juan here representing uh, Travala. And we got Jiho representing here Binance Korea. And then, uh, and then Kai here representing Toko Crypto. Uh, me personally, hi everybody. My name is Wei Wei Joe. I'm the CFO for, uh, for Binance. And then we're here basically to talk about uh, how do we make our industry, you know, I think everyone here is uh, under, under sort of the, the, the one dream of basically how do we grow an industry 100x. And I think the easy way to do it is basically, uh, you know, you just, you just grow 10x twice, you know, pretty easy to get to 100x. But I think, yep. but I think it, it, the, 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 the beauty of having the panelists here is I think we, we have a, a broad coverage, both in terms of um, geographies, um, but also in terms of um, specific products and in terms of, you know, the platform that everyone here is building. So I'm going to open it off. I think right now we're talking about growth, right? We're talking about, you know, we've been in, we've been in this industry for, you know, for three years, four years, five years. So um, how do we expand the use of digital assets? So, um, so I would actually start it off with, um, with probably, you know, Justin and Sam, you know, what are some of the most exciting products that you see on your platform? Um, before um, on sort of the product side uh, in terms of, you know, Justin and Sam and, uh, and Juan. And then before I move off to sort of Jiho and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and Kai to talk a little bit about what they see sort of in their specific regions in Korea and, and uh, in Indonesia. So uh, I think Justin's off camera right now. So, so I guess, Sam, you want to kick us started? So what, what's the most exciting thing you see on your platform right now? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've obviously been rolling out a ton of stuff, and I think a lot of it's exciting. I, I think our move contracts are maybe uh, one of the coolest things we have. They're they're basically futures which expire to how much Bitcoin moves in a day or 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 you know a week or a quarter. And the cool thing about them is, on the one hand, they're really clean and simple to understand. Like everyone knows what you know how much Bitcoin moves tomorrow means. Um, it, it's really it's really intuitive to think about. But on the other hand, for people who trade options, they're sort of very purely just volatility measures like that's sort of exactly what they are and so they're simultaneously really great hedging instruments and also uh really uh really fun intuitive things i uh, you know to, to 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 use in your in your trading great um i guess um justin uh, i'll move to you um you've been running uh, you know building a uh, building tron uh and then in, in directly and then also now basically moving into a uh, BitTorrent, and then also now you've run i guess the polonios exchange as well um uh, of all these things that you've done the last few years what's the current what's like the single product that you're most excited about on your all of your platforms yes uh i believe the the one of the single product we think has the most potential uh, is the uh, BitTorrent product. So BitTorrent has been in um, the whole decentralized space for quite a long time, uh, for almost uh, 15 years. Uh, and um, BitTorrent has over 100 million active users um, in the ecosystem. I think um, the only thing we need to do is basically integrate the blockchain technology into the BitTorrent ecosystem uh, to make all these 100 million <clears throat> active users uh, get the exposure to the blockchain industry. So uh, that's why uh, in this year, uh, we introduced uh, BitTorrent Speed uh, and BTFS, and of course, uh, uh, DLive. Um, we also hosted Binance Conference today uh, to our uh, users. Uh, these uh, three products uh, basically shape the foundation uh, of the content ecosystem and the decentralized uh, storage uh, uh, infrastructure and downloading infrastructure uh, for all the users. Uh, I think this year, uh, 2020, uh, we will ship the BitTorrent Speed um, BTFS uh, to 100% of our current users. Uh, that's definitely, I, I believe, uh, everybody will see uh, a lot of the progress on BTT ecosystem. And sure. of course, we are also the first launchpad project on um, finance. 
Yes, a Tron is from way back. Seems like so many years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess Juan, I'll move to you. I, I think um, you know, you you guys just announced an, a, a partnership with Expedia, and then I think you know, uh, and, and then also we announced uh, the Binance investment in Travala. What's and then uh, with the announcement, I think of the Binance card, which is um, provides an off ramp for I would say a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, if, who who have Binance account and have wallets with Binance. What what sort of uh, I mean, in my head, I know what's going to happen, but sort of a, what are you most excited about in terms of you know a product that you're going to roll out on the Travala platform? Yeah, thanks. Uh, wait, um, we're very excited about. Um, building uh, a one-stop shop for travel solutions. As you know, we offer over 2 million hotels across the world. Uh, we're now boosting over 600 airlines as well globally. Uh, we are very excited to bring to the travel.com platform uh, more verticals within travel, uh, from vacation rental to tours and activities, car rentals. So we have that one-stop shop uh, for any travel needs. And we really boost these uh, frictionless on-ramp into crypto. That's one of the things that obviously uh, we're very keen to work towards uh, with the help of finance as well. But to have that you know, real uh, use case for uh, mass crypto adoption through something that is very familiar to everyone, which is travel. I mean, we all travel despite of COVID at the moment with some restrictions, but travel will be back and we want to be ready for when that happens by offering that you know, level of um, uh, use experience that is you know, above anyone else in the travel industry and also, you know, a one-stop uh, shop solution with all travel needs. Sure. Thanks, Juan. Jiho, uh, Jiho I'll move to you guys. Um, I think you guys are operate, um, you know, within the, the, the regulated space, I think in Korea, uh, and then Kai with Toko Crypto. Toko Crypto is the first sort of regu- uh, first uh, exchange to receive a, a license uh, from the Papeti in Indonesia. Uh, Jiho, I understand, you know, Binance Korea is in the process of applying. Um, with sort of the new regulations that have come out in Korea from a licensing regime perspective. So, so I mean, I, I think, you know, um, whereas I think, you know, a lot of the people within the crypto space, you know, we see regulation as a, uh, as a sort of a for, very foreboding event. But what do you guys see in terms of, you know, um, within sort of your jurisdictions in Korea and in, uh, I guess, Geo first, uh, as sort of, you know, like in terms of popularizing digital assets within a country that has actually has probably one of the highest sort of digital asset penetrations. It's like, what do you see in terms of, you know, from on the regulation front on, on sort of, you know, development uh, of the licensing front in Korea, that's really gonna, you know, help our industry to grow 10 X in Korea. Yeah, I think um, regulation, like regulatory issues is all about making sure that people don't get hurt. Now, I come from a startup background, and when you're developing products, you, you, you're, you're taught that you're supposed to move fast, break things, and if something doesn't work, start over and just continue doing that until you, you satisfy your customer. But if you're, if you're touching onto finance, like, you know, if, if Twitter goes down, you don't lose your house, right? But if you're, if you're touching on in, like, even a little bit into the finance area, like, people can get hurt if you if you like you mess up. So I think re- the, regula- the regulators really want, uh, all they want is to make sure that people just don't get hurt. And coming from that perspective, I think it's actually very um, progressive for the entire industry, you know? So if, if straight, uh, sorry, clear boundaries are set, um, it would actually empower more entrepreneurs to enter this space because they know exactly what their boundaries are and exactly know what they need to do to make sure that whatever products and whatever experiments they're running uh, don't end up hurting people, even if that wasn't like their intent. So, I mean, here at Finance Korea, we're doing all we can to make sure that um, that is one of our number one goals. Uh, we are still a very you know, early, early company here in Korea and building that trust, I think is, is very essential. Sure. And, and, and Kai, I'll turn to you. I think one innovative product that you guys have um, have launched is the the BIDR um, stablecoin. Um, I, I would say, you know, for me, I think that's something that I found to be quite exciting, especially given the um, I would say given the relatively early nature of the of the, of the sort of the, the digital asset industry. And then, uh, but the thing is, is despite being the nature of industry, I think Indonesia has the regulators have at least you know come out and and, and with with pretty clear set of rules on uh, on how they're going to regulate it and which you know toko has has gone and gotten that license 
uh, and is in the process of basically, you know, getting all of the ducks lined up to get additional licensing required to offer a full suite of digital asset services in Indonesia. But, uh, and, you know, can, can you talk a little bit about, you know, on the product front, you know, a little bit more about the BIDR product, and then maybe even just give us a little bit more introduction into, uh, into Toko Crypto. Right, sure. Uh, thanks, Wei, and hi to my fellow panelists. So like Wei mentioned, yes, Togo Crypto, we are the first um, cryptocurrency exchange to be regulated by the commodities and derivatives uh, regulators over in Indonesia. We built Togo Crypto from the ground up with that in mind that we wanted to, basically Indonesia is, is pretty new to the entire crypto space, right? But um, they have been one of the first um, countries, I must say, that have uh, stepped up in, in, in um, ABEPTI, which is the name for the commodities and derivatives regulator. They have stepped up and they came to say, hey, um, um, like what Jiho mentioned, they want to they wanna come in and make sure that people's assets are safe. And it's why since the start, we have uh, built Toko Crypto from the ground up, making sure that, you know, we comply with the regulations. We were in there, in the boat together with the regulators, building the regulations from the ground up. And that managed to get us the first, um, uh, basically the first registration and license from the regulators. Now, with that being said, with this license, it has actually granted us huge access, huge, um, huge access, and it, able, and it enables us to be able to offer more products, products which we are all very excited to be able to roll out. Like what May, Wei mentioned, BIDR, that is a particular product that, that, is, um, that is very exciting and something that we are really pushing it to roll out more because it targets the remittance space. BIDR, oh no, IDR, Rupiah, is a controlled currency. Now, with the forming of BIDR, this opens up a whole list of possibilities that, that could potentially happen. Just, um, just uh, yesterday, we, we, we uh, launched uh, BKRW, BUSD, uh, BKRW USD pairings on Togo Crypto. And this essentially opens up that option for, let's say, business owners over in, in Korean business over, uh, owners over in Indonesia to allow that fiat channel, that remittance channel for them to be able to move their money from Indonesia over and back to Korea. Now, that is one, just one of the things that we are super excited for. Uh, being a regulated entity, it also allows us to offer products like futures, derivatives, and options over to our customers. And that is something that we are currently working on and that we are really excited to be able to roll out in the foreseeable future. Awesome. Uh, I'll, move, I'll move sort of, uh, we have, I think we're hot, just to give you guys a heads up, we're about halfway through our panel. And then uh, I actually want to talk a little bit, uh, I'll talk about something that, uh, that, that I think everyone on this panel should be excited about. I want to talk about the future. Um, because one of the one of the effects that, that I think COVID has had is actually I think you know that one of the things that I've sort of philosophized about is COVID has pretty much brought things forward. We're basically five years into the future now, <laughs> but because of COVID, um, with sort of um, working habits, with in terms of you know how we live, and then in terms of how we interact with technology, how we sort of you know being stuck at home all the time, and then uh, and then and then even more so um, by by force uh, if anything. So, so I kind of want to sort of like, um, you know, uh, I, I want to start with Sam again, because I think, you know, you, you, you probably think about this all the time. <laughs> and if you don't, then, you, then it's just sort of like, you know, what, like, uh, this is, this is something that, that, that just sort of like, uh, what, what's been the, like, you know, if what's been the biggest impact on your business, right. You know, that's been brought by COVID if you know, yeah. given that. Yeah, and then and then and then sort of and then how how are you visualizing it? How are you sort of you know, uh, how are you formulate sort of of a strategy and sort of get grasping it and then take advantage of it? Yeah, I mean, so I think the first thing is that there's a lot of ways in which it's changed our business less than you might expect, and and a big part of that's just like it's it's a digital industry, and so you know as compared to a place where the core interaction is in person, uh, you know there are ways in which we got got off relatively easy. Um, and I, it's also been like relatively less, less bad here than in, in many places in our office stalls and shut down. We've been here every day. Um, so it's, you know, our, our work life has been, I wouldn't say uninterrupted, but less interrupted. Um, I, I think, you know, the biggest things that I think it's done is it's, I, you know, the world just been changing a lot faster and, 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 and sort of, you know, in much more larger ways than we were used to. And I think that it, you know, it, it presents a lot of opportunities. And I think it also sort of shows us that I, uh, you know, th that I, there is sort of pretty big opportunity 
for us to uh, to really think a lot bigger in terms of who we are and what we can be as uh, you know, first of all, just a set of things that that, that are going digital is, is, is sort of increasing by necessity, but also as we just see, you know, in general, how, how big things can change so so quickly and, and other things can, can, can sort of become big. And, and I think it's it sort of caused us to think a little bit bigger than we otherwise would. Justin, I'll, Justin, I'll turn to you here. I think, I think you probably have a, a very diverse suite of products uh, in, in terms of, and then, and then also, I, I think, uh, in terms of, you know, your, your, your background from gaming. So you've pretty much have lived online your whole life <laughs> and, and, and how has COVID sort of, you know, brought, uh, you know, if it brought future forward to today, you know, how has, what's been the biggest impact on your business? You're on mute. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I, I believe the biggest impact COVID have on our business is everybody uh, has got used to uh, decentralized like management and the decentralized like work style, you know. Um, so before that, I mean, even myself, uh, we all, always do remote management um, because we have like, just like as Binance, we have like uh, office all around the globe. Um, but after COVID, I mean, um, this kind of the uh, decentralized uh, management and decentralized uh, work style has been, I believe crypto is the first industry uh, in the whole world to have this kind of the decentralized work style, right? But um, after COVID, I think Twitter, like Airbnb, Uber, like Facebook, lots of the uh, big Silicon Valley companies start to uh, move to um, decentralized uh, work style as well, so remote work. Um, I believe this is the biggest um, impact. Uh, so, for example, for me, uh, I haven't been travel for like almost half a year. So, um, basically, the majority of the time I have been spent on Zoom and uh, Telegram and all other communication channels try to talk with our uh, employee and team and to develop our product. So that's why um, I agree with you that Kobe actually four year, uh, four, four to five year, like bef uh, before like, like drive, like everybody basically migrate to online uh, life. Yeah. And Juan, I could imagine, Juan, I, I could imagine this, your industry has been impacted the biggest, right? The travel industry. But, but, you know, from talking to you, you know, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and then, you know, in the month before, we're seeing green shoots, right? In terms of, in terms of, you know, traveling, bouncing back. And, uh, and, and one of the concepts that I've heard, at least, is basically travel bubbles that are basically, you know, domestic travel or travel between countries that are quote unquote safe. Because um, I think, I haven't, I haven't left and I've left uh, my apartment multiple times, but I haven't left sort of the city that I live in, in six months. This is the longest I've stayed in one place, like since I was like in school, you know, I'm dying. I'm dying to go somewhere, anywhere, but here. So, so, yeah. 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 For us, definitely. We've seen a, a significant amount of pent up demand that's basically coming up in, in travel bookings, particularly over the last five to six weeks. Uh, some of the restrictions have been lifted across the world. Uh, this is obviously the consequence of the consequence of having people locked up for you know weeks or months. That as soon as you give them the opportunity to to travel, at least domestically, uh, you know vacation travel uh, is something that people are jumping on. Uh, there's amazing deals. You know we have deals up to forty percent discount in different top destinations that normally will cost you an absolute fortune if you can even find a, a decent hotel and so on. So yeah, definitely uh, COVID has giving us an opportunity to uh, distribute our team and distribute the way that we work, uh, just as Justin said, uh, which I think is obviously moved us forward in time, at least by five years in the way we do things. But it's also given us an opportunity to um, look at the whole travel space and identify uh, opportunities uh, that will strengthen the Travel.com brand uh, going forward. Uh, as you know, in these uh, tough times, there's always opportunities that come with it. And uh, yeah, we also, uh, you know, spend this time focusing on improving the product and making sure that we come a lot stronger on the other side. So yeah, we're happy to, to say that, you know, we saw a drop in 
in revenues that are close to 90% uh, as soon as the lockdowns started in, uh, back in, in March. But we've seen a, a nice sharp recovery uh, coming across the globe, including the United States and some of the countries they're still having you know, uh, significant numbers of, uh, of infections and so on. So there's a positive outlook for, for travel as a whole, particularly within domestic travel. And, and Jiho, uh, I'll come to you sort of like in terms of its impact because we, we launched uh, Binance.kr, the, the cloud exchange in the middle of COVID, right? Yep. And then, uh, and then mm-hmm. I think we missed our timetable by a couple of weeks at best. Um, but you had to basically run around Korea in the middle of COVID and uh, uh, co- uh, what is it, coordinate with different vendors on the ground there. Sort of, how, how has how has sort of you know that impacted business in Korea, and, and your business? So, specifically? so uh, because most of the population in Korea is so densely packed into Seoul, it's I mean it's very very common for most of like anyone that you need to meet up with is within the Seoul metro area. So it's very natural for people to just like ask to go out for lunch, to go out for dinner and just get business done face to face. Now that has uh, gone down a little bit. And what I, what I felt was most disrupt- disruptive was that although Korea is still a very connected country, there is still a lot of stuff that, uh, that, that where people are required to go physically to a specific location to sign something or fill out papers and whatnot. And like, you know, some, uh, the easy banking stuff, again, it's all online, but let's like, for example, I needed to get a loan, uh, because I needed some quick liquidity on fiat, uh, about two weeks ago, I had to go to my city bank. They asked me to sit like for two hours and, and I just had to wait and watch them like literally move papers around, ask someone for their signature and whatnot. And I think the banks are realizing that that is not scalable anymore. People are becoming more. Uh, decentralized. Uh, they much would like to enjoy their space, you know, do, doing whatever else other than going to a physical location and just waiting there. So I think that is really pushing Korea to rethink how they're doing a lot of the stuff that, you know, they thought was okay up till now. And I think like blockchain crypto will kind of become the driver behind that because they're not going to be able to build up an entire like monolithic system um, like over the course of a year to, to fix that problem. They're going to need to go through, uh, uh, they're going to need to look at existing technologies. And I think like blockchain crypto just is, is right there. It's waiting for them. And, and, and Kai, I think Indonesia has been, I would say heavily impacted by, by this. Right. But, and, but, but I think to, to echo sort of what Jiho said and everybody else has said, sort of like, you know, people, as people have been working from home in a country where I think it's just as dense and just as concentrated in Jakarta, how has that impacted sort of, you know, as I mentioned, you know, same as, uh, same as Jiho, you guys launched uh, the exchange in the middle of COVID, in the middle of yep. a lockdown. Yep. yep. Um, I think, yeah, the sentiments chime with the, the, the others that are on, the other panelists that are on this panel. But I think for Toko Crypto, it's, for us, for when we when we launched and when Binance Cloud, basically when Togo Crypto went live with uh, Togo Crypto 2.0, that's powered by Binance Cloud, um, a lot of the access, like fiat channels, um, a lot of those accesses access was were already built. So for us, it it was really more about rolling it out, getting it, getting the product to people and user acquisition, which we find somehow um, um, it's kind of easier to reach out to people. Um, during this uh, particular situation, when I call someone and it, I wouldn't have to wait to schedule my co- my my calls or or when my sales team calls up someone, they do not have to wait to schedule the calls. If we attend webinars, it's instead of just um, you know having to spend money on a, on an event space, spend money on marketing. You you it, you it's very easy to connect with people and 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 you, you get people that uh that I just finished um. Uh, webinar with uh, Umurgo Indonesia, who are the, uh, in the same group as Cardano with uh, close to 100 people. We don't normally see this kind of attendance in, 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 in Indonesia. Um, we, I guess you can, uh, for those who have been in Jakarta, you guys would, would also attest to this, is that the traffic in Indonesia is, is crazy. It's madness, man. And, and people who attend events, um, usually you get 200 and sign up, but maybe only 50 turn up. But with this COVID that's going on, more people are, uh, it's whetting people's appetite to want to learn, to want to explore more. And I think 
that's a kind of like a positive outtake um, on this entire COVID situation in Jakarta. Awesome. Uh, I guess we'll come to sort of. I'll give. I'll give uh, Justin and Sam sort of the final, final, final two comments here. Justin, I'll go. I'll start with you. Um, what do we have to look forward uh, uh, in terms of you know product release wise? Because uh, you talked you talked a lot about BitTorrent and all of its sort of you know its applications, and uh, and and I think you know for for Tron basically you know what what's what what do we what do we have to look forward to? Yeah, for this year, I think Tron um, the focus is on uh, decentralized financing. Uh, we have been uh, doing a lot of the work on decentralized finance uh, since last year. Uh, so that's why we launched the uh, uh, JST token as a core um, uh, token in the Tron um, DeFi um, products. So uh, we, we have seen a lot of the progress uh, on Ethereum network. Uh, for example, uh, UnionSwap, like Compound, MakerDAO, uh, uh, Synthetics. Uh, and uh, all those uh, DeFi projects. And the Tron uh, developers is also trying to build uh, all these kind of the decentralized finance product on, on top of Tron. Uh, so that's why I believe uh, the DeFi on Tron is a good opportunity. And uh, recently we have launched JST um, token. It's like, um, so you can take a TRX as a collateral and it generates the stable coin. And second step, uh, we will see the decentralized lending platform and decentralized um, exchange and also um, um, decentralized uh, derivative and decentralized BTC uh, on Tron platform. Uh, so that's why I believe this is like the one of the most important uh, since on Tron network. And also on C5, uh, we have been seeing a lot of the progress on USDT on Tron Network. Uh, we also collaborate with Binance on this and launch uh, several uh, campaigns for uh, USDT holders on Binance projects. I think this project is also uh, is, uh, welcomed by the community. Uh, right now we have over uh, 400K uh, users on Tron Network uh, using USDT every day. And we have seen over 5 million transactions uh, since we launched uh, USDT on Tron. Um, so that's why uh, I believe uh, the growth of USDT is also very exciting in this year. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually think um, uh, stable coins is uh, like, it's gonna popular. I think if, if any if any single digital asset outside of Bitcoin and BNB, uh, I would say stable coins. I think for Binance, uh, we've launched, uh, I think five, five stable coins so far now. We have uh, BUSD, um, but also sort of uh, BKRW uh, in conjunction with Binance Korea, BIDR in conjunction with, uh, with Tokyo Crypto. Um, and, and also sort of a BGPP. And then I think we have a few more uh, in, in the pipeline coming this year. Um, for that, I, I wanna thank our panelists. I would like to thank uh, Justin and Sam uh, and Kai and Jiho and Juan. Thank you very much for your time. And, uh, and uh, thanks for everyone for, uh, for listening to our, and uh, watching our panel. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you guys. You. Thanks. Yeah.